In this video, we're going to learn about the new way to do data flow in SwiftUI with iOS 17. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below. Let's open up Xcode 15 and get started with a brand new project. We'll stick with the app template and we'll call this new data flow. Make sure you've got Swift and SwiftUI picked. And what we'll start by doing is setting up the way you would traditionally handle data flow. Uh, I'm gonna set it up really quickly and I like doing this from scratch so you know folks don't get confused by starter code and then we're gonna adjust it to the new way um, which is fairly simple and straightforward. All right, so what we're gonna do in this little baby project is I am going to essentially set up some UI which is going to showcase the number of subscribers that I have on the iOS Academy YouTube channel at the time of making this video. So we're just gonna stick a one in here for now before I put together the view model. And we're gonna have a way to increment this number and it's gonna be updated with the old way and then the new way of data flow. So let's actually do this. I'm gonna add some padding here. I'm gonna add a font here and what we'll do is we'll do a system font of maybe 32 and a weight of semi bold. And I'll add this guy here as well and refresh my preview and we should see this hopefully pop up unless I've totally screwed something up already. Looks like we've got a view, I've got an error here which tells me that I've got a typo somewhere. Let's see what's going on. All right, let me get rid of this. Let's build that again. I wanna say I have, ah, here we go, we got a little typo in the word alignment right there. Make sure you don't spell things incorrectly like I just did, otherwise stuff doesn't work. But all right, so we've got our view set up here and what we'll do is we'll set up the traditional way of uh, data flow, one of the traditional ways I should say, and I'm gonna create a class right up here called view model. It's going to be an observable object. We'll add an initializer and we're gonna have a single property in here, which will be annotated published, which essentially tells our view that whenever our uh, property updates, whenever this published property updates, we need to refresh the view. And we, of course, need to bring in an instance of this view model into this view with either state object or observed object based on you know, uh, one of two cases, which is a topic for another video. We'll bring this in like so, and we can use this view model number, or the count, I should say, directly from that property. So if we hit Command uh, Option P to refresh this preview, you'll see the number here. And whenever this count figure changes, our view should automatically refresh. So what I'll do down here is I will add a button, which is add subscriber and inside of it i'll just do view model count and i'll do plus equal one and whenever i tap on this button we should see this changing as it is right here in the preview because every time we update count it gets published and this publish annotation will trigger a refresh here so this is essentially the old way of doing things and ios 17 actually introduces a new framework and simplifies this um, that's part one of what it does. And actually what it even does even more so than that under the hood is that it makes things more performant. So let's bring in that new observation framework and let's take a look at this. So you might see people bringing in Swift data or observation. You can actually go about it uh, both ways. The reason it works is that observation is included with Swift data. It actually relies on it under the hood but bringing in Swift data is a little heavy handed just when you need observation. Just gonna call that out since you might have seen that elsewhere, but I digress. We're gonna bring this in and we're gonna start simplifying things. So with observation, what we can actually now do is get rid of this and we can also get rid of the published annotation here and we're gonna annotate this entire class as observable. And the next thing we can get rid of is this guy right here. So whether you have state object or observed object, just get rid of it. And that's it. That's the new way of doing it. And let's make sure this works. And then I will talk through what actually just happened here under the hood. So if I click on this, it should still increment as it does. Functionally, it doesn't look different at all, but a whole new way of doing things. And let's talk about what actually just happened here. So first and foremost, we now don't have the overhead to think about if a object, be it a view model or something else, should be a state object or a observed object. 
we don't have to think about how the view is going to persist our uh, data updates as they are rendered in the view. The next thing that we did is we no longer have to manually annotate properties as published. So what this lets us do is not only simplify syntax, but you can imagine, you know, in the older way of doing things, right? Let's say I had another property on here, which is the name of the channel. And let's make sure we spell this correctly. And we stick this inside here. Now, whenever, whoops, viewmodel.name, traditionally with the published approach, let's say we had something else in here, right? Let's say we have, I don't know, like a date created of the channel. And let's say we're not using this in this view here, but let's say this was indeed marked published in our original implementation. Now, what would happen is every time this would be written to, it would, you know, trigger a view refresh because it would be published, but this view isn't even using this date created thing. So that would unnecessarily refresh the view. And when you compound this across a number of, you know, several views that are nested within each other, you can quickly see that we're unnecessarily refreshing stuff, which is by virtue going to make your app look finicky and also hitch uh, and just unnecessarily use battery life and, you know, lots of not great things. Now what Observed does is, also under the hood, it is also taking a look at what elements from this data structure, from this class in this case, are we actually using in this view? And in this case, we're using the name and the count. And if I actually undo this here and just manually type it in again, we're actually only using the count. So what that'll let SwiftUI do is when name or date created is written to or changed, that's fine that it changed, but there's no reason to refresh this view. Perhaps some other view under the hood is using it, but we're not gonna unnecessarily refresh all of this jazz. And it's a minute detail, you know, from the top level perspective, but this dramatically improves performance. The last thing I'll mention before wrapping up here is that this observable, is actually a Swift macro. So if you right click it, you should be able to expand the macro here and take a look at Apple's code. Um, they heavily utilize uh, generics here. And by doing so, they are able to get all this functionality. Um, Swift macros are available for a variety of functionality like this, but I did at least want to expand it and just call out the fact that it's a new Swift macro, hence its availability in the new version of Swift, iOS 17, and the other new platforms that Apple has announced at WWDC 2023. That is all I've got for you guys in this video. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, this 99,942 is a old figure and we're past the 100,000 mark. Make sure you drop a like before clicking away. Let me know if you have questions in the comments, share the channel, connect on the socials. Always love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.